Welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving deep into the gripping tale of Leon Trotsky, his Siberian exile, and the pivotal role he played in the Russian Revolution. Let's unravel how Siberia shaped a revolutionary. Leon Trotsky was born Lev Davidovich Bronstein on November 7, 1879, in Yanovka, a small village in what is now Ukraine. Born into a family of wealthy Jewish farmers, Trotsky was exposed to the realities of rural life, class divisions, and anti-Semitic sentiment from an early age. His early education was primarily at home, where he exhibited signs of intellectual prowess. Later, he moved to the port city of Odessa to attend a German-language school, where he was exposed to a more cosmopolitan atmosphere and was first introduced to revolutionary literature and ideas. Among his early influences were the works of prominent European thinkers, including Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. However, his political ideology also began to crystallize through encounters with local socialist circles in Odessa. Even in these early years, Trotsky showed signs of a keen intellect coupled with an intense drive for social justice. By his late teens and early 20s, Trotsky had become an active participant in the Russian revolutionary underground. Joining the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party RSDLP, in 1898, he soon found himself amid the ideological split between the Mensheviks and the Bolsheviks. Initially aligning more closely with the Mensheviks, Trotsky was actively involved in various forms of agitation and propaganda. He took part in activities such as printing and distributing revolutionary literature, organizing strikes, and speaking at illegal gatherings. These activities didn't go unnoticed and he was arrested multiple times. However, Trotsky's ideological stance evolved over time, particularly as he began to be influenced by Vladimir Lenin's writings and observed the efficacy of more radical tactics. He would later join the Bolshevik faction and became a close collaborator with Lenin, but not before undergoing more trials and tribulations. Before his notorious Siberian exile, Trotsky had already faced arrest and temporary exiles for his revolutionary activities. His first arrest came in 1898, shortly after joining the RSDLP. He was held in prison for two years, awaiting trial, before being exiled to Ustkut and Verkolinsk in Siberia for a further two years. This was a relatively mild exile compared to what would come later, but it offered Trotsky a glimpse into the harshness and isolation of life away from the political hotbeds of Russia's urban centers. His second arrest came in 1905 after participating in the events of the 1905 Russian Revolution, an experience that further radicalized him and set the stage for his later significant role in the 1917 October Revolution. Following a show trial, he was sentenced to another exile, this time further and harsher. However, Trotsky managed to escape from his place of exile both times, taking great risks to rejoin the revolutionary activities. Leon Trotsky's most significant exile to Siberia came as a result of his active involvement in revolutionary activities, particularly following his roles in the 1905 revolution and subsequent political agitations. Arrested multiple times and considered a dangerous instigator against the Tsarist regime, he faced harsh penalties that included long periods of exile in Siberia. His writings, as well as his organizing efforts, were seen as direct threats to the state, necessitating his removal from mainstream society. Trotsky's Siberian exile was an ordeal filled with hardships, both physical and intellectual. He was sent to labor camps where the living conditions were grim and prisoners were subjected to grueling work schedules. The climate was harsh, and the remoteness of the location served as both a physical and psychological barrier. Unlike his earlier somewhat milder periods of exile, the Siberian one was profoundly isolating. He was cut off from the fervent intellectual discussions happening in the revolutionary circles of Petrograd and Moscow. Newspapers were scarce and correspondence was heavily monitored. This intellectual isolation was a double-edged sword. While it limited his access to ongoing political developments, it also provided him with time to think, read, and write. The conditions were undoubtedly harsh, but Trotsky used his time in Siberia to engage in intense intellectual activities. With limited distractions, he had the time to focus on theoretical studies and sharpen his political ideas. He pored over whatever books he could lay his hands on, absorbing different theoretical perspectives and subjecting them to his own critical analysis. Although the material was limited, Trotsky had access to a range of works including those by Marx, Engels, and other socialist thinkers. This reading material helped him deepen his understanding of Marxist theory and refine his own political philosophies. It was during this period that he began formulating the theory of permanent revolution, 
which argued that in countries with delayed bourgeois development, like Russia, the proletariat could take the lead in establishing a socialist state. After his return from exile and his eventual alignment with the Bolsheviks, Trotsky played a pivotal role in the October Revolution of 1917. As the chairman of the Petrograd Soviet, he was crucial in planning and executing the armed uprising against the provisional government. His organizational skills and fervent speeches galvanized the Red Guards and other revolutionary forces, culminating in the seizure of key points in Petrograd and ultimately leading to the establishment of the Bolshevik government. Despite the heavy monitoring of communication, Trotsky managed to correspond covertly with other revolutionaries and intellectuals, both within Russia and beyond. These letters served as a means to share ideas, debate theories, and remain connected to the revolutionary movement, even while in exile. Importantly, some of these correspondences were with individuals who would later play key roles in the Russian Revolution, thereby establishing a network that would be activated when the time was ripe. In summary, although his exile to Siberia was designed to stifle his political activities, it inadvertently provided Trotsky with the intellectual space to mature his revolutionary ideologies. This period of forced solitude proved instrumental in shaping him into a key theoretician and leader, preparing him for the critical role he would later play in the Russian Revolution of 1917. Trotsky and Lenin were often in intellectual alignment, particularly in the urgency of seizing power in 1917. However, they had their differences too. Lenin was more focused on the party's role as the vanguard of the proletariat, while Trotsky emphasized the spontaneity of mass actions. When it came to the execution of the October Revolution, both demonstrated remarkable skills in organization and strategy, but Trotsky was particularly noted for his abilities in the mobilization and effective control of revolutionary forces. Unlike other revolutionaries who might have preferred more cautious or incremental steps, both Lenin and Trotsky were united in their belief in the need for decisive radical action to establish a socialist state. The end of the Russian Revolution marked the beginning of a new phase of struggle for the Bolsheviks as they moved from revolution to governance. Leon Trotsky played a vital role during this period as well, notably as the founder and commander of the Red Army, which was instrumental in defeating the white forces in the Civil War. But the years following the revolution also brought new challenges, including ideological rifts within the Bolshevik leadership. Trotsky's relationship with Lenin remained mostly strong until Lenin's death in 1924, after which a power struggle erupted between Trotsky and Joseph Stalin. Despite his pivotal role in the revolution and the civil war, Trotsky was eventually sidelined by Stalin and was expelled from the Communist Party, leading to his final exile and eventual assassination. From Siberia to the heart of the Russian Revolution, Trotsky's journey is truly captivating. If you enjoyed this deep dive, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more.